Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Vintage Vinny here. Welcome to my eBay sales for the month of December 2023. Sold quite a bit, and I even have some crazy stories to go along with some of the sales. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So right off the bat, I was able to sell another one of those Playgirl magazines that you all saw me pick up, um, or that I talked about in one of my other videos. I actually think it was my last sales video. So if you'd missed that story, long story short, I was at one of the local antique malls, and um, the guy has lots of Playboys, and um, I noticed the Playgirl sitting on the shelf, and I was like, oh, you know, you see a lot of Playboys, you don't really see a lot of Playgirls. I was embarrassed to be walking around the mall with these in my hand for your fear of judgment and things, but, you know, I will buy what sells regardless of what kind of, you know, what the subject matter is in this case. Anywho, so I paid about, uh, it was $10 for, I think, five issues, so roughly two fifty dollars apiece. I did look them up uh, before I purchased them, of course, and... What I did was I looked at each issue by year, and there were a couple of them that were from the first year that Playgirl was released in the 70s. And then um, I looked at the other issues, the ones from the early 80s, you know, they didn't, weren't doing so hot, so I decided to list those two together. Those are still available. And then I looked at this one from 1992, and I saw that somebody had purchased one for like $34, so I went ahead and li listed mine for... Just a little bit under that, and it did sell for the full asking price of $29.99. This item I picked up at one of the charity thrift stores that we have here in town. Um, it helps support the military, and I haven't been there in a while, so I may have to make another trip out there. But I was pleasantly surprised to see that something like this sells, or did sell, for... Um, I think I took a best offer of 18 actually. I think I sent the offer out and the uh, buyer accepted. So I paid 5 and I sold it for 18 This was interesting to me. I got this at one of the antique mall slash indoor flea markets that we have not far from me in PA. Uh, this is a Silvac Pottery, I think it's Pica Lily or Pica Lily. And I saw it in the booth, and I was really interested and curious about it. So I saw it said um, England on it. And I looked it up, and when I did, I only saw listings that were overseas in the UK. So I thought, you know, somebody who really likes this stuff might want it, but don't doesn't want to pay the overseas international shipping fee. So I thought that would be something to, good to pick up, and... I did. I think I paid about $11 for it, and I took a best offer of $35 for it. So several months ago, I was at one of our local Goodwills, and in their grab bags, they had these um, paper punches, um, and they were Martha Stewart. I believe it was $10 for five of them, but the color of the week, I think, was blue, and the all of them ended up being $5. So I got five for five bucks, and I sold both of these together for a combined total of $20. So some of the Martha Stewart uh, paper punches can do pretty well, depending on how much you pay for them. And yeah, so I couldn't leave those. Another item that I have had for quite a while is this um, Satin Custard Glass Frog. I did buy this at the um, Old Glory Antiques in Frederick. Um, it was $22.50. Um, I did end up, quote-unquote, doubling my money there. So I, instead of, I, I sold it for $45. And then after fees, it was like 40 something that I got for, like 43 So... I'll take my, whatever I can get because I've had this a while. It does glow. It was custard. Signed by the artist. So that was a good pickup. Some Kate Spade things sell well and some things don't. Um, in this case, this was a good one because it was a very interesting design. Um, Daycation Matchbook was the name of this pattern. 
I looked high and low to see if I could find this, um, and I think I paid only, maybe it was like five, three to five dollars I paid for it at an antique store slash indoor flea market. And I did sell it for a full asking price of $29.99. Really cool. It's a makeup bag. Um, I liked all the matchbook designs on it. I thought that looked really retro. That's what initially attracted me to it. I did end up listing these Blanco Glass ship sea boat bookends. Um, I believe I paid $10 for those. And I got those at Black Rose of Hanover. I actually just, if you guys saw one of my recent videos, I did go up there. I was a little disappointed um, with the selection of items and maybe I was just being picky or um, just being frugal with what I was purchasing. But anywho, that's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes you score big, sometimes you don't. Anywho, so I had these up for $40 for the longest time, and someone offered me $25, and I went ahead and accepted. I believe I paid $10. Now, this was something that I've had sitting downstairs in my basement for a while. Again, this came from a local antique mall. It's a Betty Page ornament, dark horse from the year 2000. And initially, I wanted to keep her for myself, but, you know... I, when I saw how much they were going for, I said, I don't really want this sitting downstairs. And if this were like a 50s ornament of Betty Page, more than likely I would have been keeping it. But you know what? I don't need everything pin up. Um, I paid $6 for this. I believe I've had this since like before the pandemic. So it, like I said, it was originally a keeper. And then I decided to go ahead and list it when I saw how much they were selling for. So I paid 6 and I believe I did take a best offer of $85. So that was a pretty good return on investment, if you ask me. You know, Jim Shore stuff, I have a hard time selling. Um, I have a bunny and I have a um, mini um, figurine, two of those figurines listed right now. Um... And it's, it's a tough sell. I, I don't know if it's because of the cost to ship it or if it's just, you know, it just depends on the piece. Anywho, so I believe I paid about $8 for the set of four of these. Three wise men, Joseph, Mary, and baby Jesus uh, nativity ornaments. And I took a best offer of 25 So, you know, I'll take what I can get for some items. This was another good pickup. Um, most coffee mugs that I find, they just don't do well or they just take a while to sell. That's that's just what I find. And plus mugs can be kind of hard to ship depending on what you're uh, looking at. But this is an Emma Bridgewater mug. And I looked at it and I was like, you know, that's kind of interesting. You know, I've never seen anything quite like that before. So I saw... This on the bottom, I was like, oh, Bridgewater Seabirds, England. So I said, you know what the heck, let me go ahead and look it up. And the mugs were going for upwards of about 50 bucks. So I paid about three and I listed it for the $49.99. Someone offered me 40 and I immediately took it because that was, you know, a really good return on investment, if you ask me. So if you guys don't know, keep your eyes peeled for Emma Bridgewater stuff because it does sell for good money depending on the subject matter. So here is an item that um, I guess you could say starts the crazy stories for the month. So I bought this in Kentucky at one of the peddler's malls that we all went to. And let me tell you, all those peddler malls were... Um, they were great. There were so many good things. They kicked Goodwill's butts far, far out of the state of Kentucky. <laughs> Anywho, so I sold this one time. I believe I, yeah, I paid $20 for this. Uh, this is Mary Kay Tribute. It's from the 90s, I believe. Late, like 80s, 90s, I think. Uh, probably a discontinued scent. Um, and somebody did offer me, I want to say... Maybe eighty or eighty-five dollars for it the first time, and I had packaged it up, gotten it ready to go out, and like the day before, 
my pickup was scheduled, the guy is like, oh, I changed my mind, cancel it. And I'm like, really, dude? Come on now. Once you pay for something, you or once you've made the offer and I've accepted it, you've committed to buy it. And I, I was just annoyed at that point. But I get it, you know, I don't know people's financial situations. There could have been a bit of buyer's remorse. Like I said, so many circumstances, it's frustrating, but that's just kind of part of doing this is you, you just can't judge it as much as you really want to, and it's frustrating, but, you know, just be accepted or accept the fact that the sale was canceled, as annoying as it is, and just relist it. So I did, and then uh, it did resell, but it sold for full asking price of one nineteen ninety nine. So keep your eyes peeled for certain fragrances, because I'm telling you, it stuff sells. This Some of this old uh, perfume and cologne... People buy it because formulas change, um, or it's not made anymore. So you just never know. If you're out and about at the thrift stores or even in your indoor flea markets, that's usually where I find a lot of my perfumes and colognes and beauty products. Definitely look them up because sometimes you can find a really valuable piece, a really expensive product, and pay next to nothing for it, and you make some decent money. So here is another one of the uh, items that had a crazy story to them, to it. So this uh, Revlon lipstick came with a bunch of other beauty products. It was it was in a grab bag at the Goodwill, and I looked it up and I was like, oh, you know, it's it's discontinued. Uh, somebody out there might want it, and so I listed it. Sat for a while. Someone offered me. X amount, they were like, hey, can you do this with uh, free shipping? I'm like, you know what, yeah, fine, whatever. And then, um, maybe about a couple weeks, it was like a week before Christmas, I get a message from her saying that the lipstick was rancid and this, all this other stuff. So she messaged me one time, and then about 15 minutes later, she sends me another message saying that if I don't accept the return, she's going to report me to the health department because her friend and her brother were a nurse and said that they looked at this and said it was appalling and how bad it was and you know it was brand new I never opened it and that's <laughs> funny I messaged I was so I messaged her back and then I told my dad about it and he thought that this lady was just scamming and just trying to get her money back for a product that was perfectly fine but you know, when it comes to new and sealed, discontinued products, especially a lipstick, you know, I don't really want to risk, you know, getting reported to the health department or anything, but I just thought that that was a little over the top. You know, you could have just messaged me and said, hey, you know, this lipstick might not be any good. Is there a possibility I could just get a refund and I'll pitch the product because it really isn't, you know, safe to use. But, you know... Maybe it was a tactic just to, uh, maybe, I don't know. But that's my story with that. And like I said, when it comes to products like this, even if it is new and sealed and it's opened up and it's bad, I get it. I just don't want to, I'd rather not deal with the hassle. It was just this, it's like, lady, come on. You don't need to give me your whole, like a whole a story of what happened with this product. You could have just told me, okay, hey, something's wrong with it. I think it needs to be pitched. I can't use it. Is, it a is there a possibility you could issue me a refund and I'll just pitch the product? Which, by this point, I really was just kind of annoyed and got a little nervous. So I just sent her a refund and just moved on. So that's that story. So this is awesome. Uh, I have seen maybe probably not even a handful of these at some of the shops that I visited. Uh, this is the 1988 Oots Potato Chips Sally Girl doll. Um, if you guys don't know, Oots Potato Chips is actually headquartered in Hanover, PA. And every time I go up that way, I pass by the factory. It's really cool. So I got this at Rebel Roost Emporium. That's in New Oxford, PA, on the way up to Hanover. I got it for about $6, and I did take a best offer of $25. The first time I saw this doll, I actually got it at the Black Rose of Hanover, and I paid 15 for that one. So I was thrilled to be able to find another one of these. Um, 
like I said, it's not something I see too much. I mean, granted, I've seen a handful of them now, or not even a handful of them. But, yeah, I mean, I think she's great, and like I said, she's not something that all of us see all the time. So I decided to go ahead and pick her up again, and I was able to sell her, and I'm glad somebody else was able to enjoy her. Another Goodwill item, I paid $4 for this. It's a Lego Mythical Creatures 3-in-1 um, set. Uh, this, uh, like I said, was $4.00. I did take a best offer of 28 and I felt that that was a very reasonable um, price. So this is a Lady and the Tramp Hound Dog. I believe his name is Trusty. Uh, it's a Disney figurine uh, made in Japan. I believe I paid $5 for this and I took a best offer of $18 for him. In that same bag with that, or maybe it wasn't this one, maybe it was a different one. Uh, another uh, beauty product, um, Glytone Brand Enhancing Brightening Serum. Uh, this came in a beauty grab bag from a Goodwill. And I believe I took a best offer of $35 for this. So like I said, guys, there are beauty products out there that people will buy. So keep your eyes peeled. If you see something that looks interesting, look it up. Because you just never know. So this is another item that I uh, purchased in Kentucky. Um, it did have a base. Unfortunately, the base did break. So um, I ended up just uh, listing the shade as is, which, you know, is perfectly fine. Uh, because sometimes people break the shades to their fairy lamps that they love so much, and then they need to buy a replacement. So I did pay 30 bucks for the entire uh, the base and the... Um, the whole nine yards, the fairy lamp. Um, and I did sell just the shade alone for $51. So that was pretty good. Another thing that, um, you know, I don't see, I mean, I see it sometimes, is Williams Sonoma. We don't have, like, where I live, it's not, let's just say it's not like Tyson's Corner, Virginia. It's like, it's not very high end. You know, like Pottery Barn and, uh, you know, Pottery Barn and, like, Z Gallery. We don't have any of that out here. I mean, the most high-end that we have out here is probably a Brooks Brothers outlet. And, you know, anywho, you get, the, you get what I'm trying to say here. It's not too high-end out here. Anywho, so this was at a Goodwill. I believe I paid $10 for it. It was a Frosted Clove Kitchen Essentials Kit. And I actually smelled this, and it smells pretty darn good. And I was able to sell it for full asking price of $39.99. This is another item that I've had since before the pandemic. Uh, this is a 1996 Rugrats... Um, double-sided comforter. I believe it was a twin. And it was in really good shape. I mean, there were no... Oh, that was completely blurry. No stains, no rips, no tears. Um, I believe I paid... Like I said, it's been a while. I'm thinking 8 to about 12 bucks for this. I did sell it for full asking price of $59.99. Uh, the person that bought it from me spent 50 bucks to ship it. Um, I usually like to look at rates on eBay because it gives you the option of eBay, UPS, USPS, FedEx. And like I said, she paid $56 to ship this thing to where she is. And then I go onto the UPS um, section where it's um, after I put in the dimensions and how much it weighed, or dimensions of the box and how much it weighed with the item. And it only cost $17.12 for UPS. So, of course, I shipped it that way, and then whatever I didn't use, I sent right back to her, and I know, or I hope she's going to be thrilled with that. Because I, I, yeah, that's probably why it sat for as long as it did, because, so, I guess I can explain something here. So, I don't ever really know what, item is going to fit in what box 
if it's a larger item such as this. So when I'm doing the listings, I just make a rough guesstimate of what kind of box it'll fit in, how much it'll weigh, because I don't pre-package my items like I do with my live sales. Like my live sales, I will pack everything, weigh it, get the dimensions of the box, and then find out how much it costs, and then send my invoice. With eBay, it's a little different. I have to be a little, I have to roughly guesstimate. Sometimes I pay a little bit more than what the person originally paid for the shipping. And sometimes it's a lot more than <laughs> what they should have paid. So I sold the item and I found a much cheaper rate to ship to her. So I was thrilled to be able to give her back a big chunk of her shipping money because I'm sure she probably watched this for a long time and was probably... Like saying, I really want this, and I'm a little unhappy with the shipping price. But I'm happy I was able to get her a cheaper rate. And the final item that I would like to share with you all that I sold for the month of January. I'm sorry, December. I'm looking at the corner of my computer, and it says January 2nd. I recently just bought these at the Hancock Antique Mall. These are those OXO Good Grip Adjustable Measuring Cups. I got those for $6, and I did send out a best offer of $28, and that's what they sold for. Brand new. Um, I looked these up in the store just to make sure that what I was buying was worth what I was going to pay for them, and it was most definitely worth it. So I thank you all so much for watching my video. Again, I apologize if this was rather long. Great sales, some crazy stories, and yes. But I hope you all did well if you sell on eBay for the Q4. And if you had a really good sale that you would like for me to hear about and let everyone else know about, you can leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video.